Behold, a very horrible layer shift situation on my print. This happened, and uh, I'm going to talk about how this happened. Uh, and it wasn't just this model. Actually, it happened uh, before I tried printing this model. This was actually after I tried some of the fixes, some of the common fixes for layer uh, shifting. I had already tried some of those fixes. I even printed a successful calibration cube. Looked like this, and I was like, great, my uh, calibration cube is looking good. I'm ready to go. And then I printed this, and I was like, that is not good at all. So, uh, if this is happening to you, uh, I, I can probably walk you through my experience. Maybe you'll pick up something that's helpful. Uh, so, let's talk about it. So this is layer shift. What is layer shift? This obviously should be a nice smooth shape. You can see the layers at some point are being separated, moving over, and then continuing on as if everything was fine. Then you can see it happened again, 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 again. Heck, at one point it even changed directions and went that way. What caused it? Oh, oh, this problem was caused long before all of this. Ah. Uh, I started noticing it when I was printing multiple parts like this. So I have a little articulated skeleton here. I had a almost like a mini figure here. I had another sort of small figure here, and this was another articulated wheel bearing uh, that I was I was working on. And if you notice, uh, of course I've got a big raft here because what was happening on this particular print was I was having some hard time with build plate adhesion specifically and it's going to be hard to see probably in this light but specifically in here there are some small axles to parts of this inner wheel and they're just small circles like this and when this print starts out it's just these small circles uh, and then it starts printing this other sort of material around it you can even see that this was experiencing layer shifting and as this was layer shifting, you can see also here uh, that this is the, the nozzle even sort of got stuck here and it looks like it even kind of burned a little bit on the material. Uh, once that happens, then the skeleton also was off a little bit. Uh, and at some point, at some point, it, had I not stopped the print, these other pieces would have all also been shifted. So what's happening here is the nozzle's traveling, 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 and if a part lifts, you can see even my tweezers are getting stuck on some of this. This is how uneven this part was printing out. Uh, if it gets stuck on some of this, what happens is it kind of drags and skips. Now its plotting is off, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm in the right spot, but it's not in the right spot. That's your layer shift. A number of things can cause that. I'd had a build plate full of these. They're Apple TV brackets that I was printing. I, I need to print six of them. And you can see, instead of being straight, you can see that the whole part shifted and shifted. And then this <laughs> this is supposed to be straight. And of course, it's just hooked, uh, hooked around like that. Uh, so, and this happened twice. The first time, 20 two hours into a 24-hour build of six of these, uh, and then it happened again on another plate full of six of these, and I'm like, okay, I've got to fix this problem uh, because I can't keep throwing these in the trash. It's a waste of my time. So Most of the common fixes are printer-centric. Uh, uh, you can tighten the belt here. Make sure your belt tension is good. Make sure all of your screws and things are all tight. Make sure the printer is free of debris. Make sure there's nothing cracked. Make sure there's nothing broken. Make sure there's no pieces hanging around where they should be. Make sure there's no rogue, uh, you know, pieces of spaghetti catching in, into things that you shouldn't have. And then, you know, the typical physical checks. All the things you would normally do uh, to, to if you're troubleshooting some kind of print behavior. But I went through all that and, uh, like I said, that's when I was like, okay, things must be great. My... Uh, calibration cube is fine life is good i printed this mess and i'm like no this is still happening and so then i said okay 
I, I have to believe that the printer is physically okay because I can print this cube. And even if we're just comparing sort of layer height, uh, the, sh the shift happened clearly, you know, not only above this height. So I can, I can rule out that the problem only happens at a certain height level. So I'm like, what in the earth is happening to me? On this other piece, again, that, that was happening here, this was printing along fine. It, the print nozzle caught on something and did this whole horrible layer shift to me and messed up this, what was going to be a very nice piece. I said, this has to be, there has to be a fix for this. Why is my nozzle not clearing? It's got to be something in the settings file, uh, which we'll take a look at after this. Hey everybody, so here are the two profile files. Uh, on the right is the one provided by Anycubic for the Viper for PLA, and the one on the left is from Mpox, which is a file that uh, that's been sort of shared out in different uh, communities and things, and a lot of people are having luck with it. Uh, and I want to review some of the key differences between the two, uh, at least the most important ones. Uh, some of them, some of these are, are uh, minimal tweaks, but some I think are making a significant difference. So uh, I'll kind of try to try to run through this pretty quickly. So layer height is a minor difference here. This is just a, uh, I think, a nod in the direction of a little more quality, uh, laying laying down 0.16. Of course, that's going to add a little time, but you should get a, a little bit better quality. I uh, bring that down. This is uh, 0 0.2, but, uh, you know, I think that's kind of standard for normal printing. You could drop all the way down to 0 0.1. I've printed as low as 0 0.08, and it came out okay, although I wouldn't say there was a significant difference in in the quality over 0 0.1. Uh, so there's there's a sweet spot. Uh, where the print will behave, and so you kind of have to feel it out as far as the the nuance there. There's a pretty big difference here in the wall thickness. Again, this is this is thinner walls. This is uh, also to print, I think, some sort of finer detailed type pieces. Moving down, we're looking at there's some differences in in the bottom layers here. This one confuses me a little bit because I would think. For good build plate adhesion, you, it's typically recommended if your part is warping, peeling, cooling off um, in, in, in an unpredictable way, you would you would tend to up your bottom layers and have a, a thicker bottom layer. However, the bottom thickness here is 1.2, but it's accomplishing it in two layers, which is interesting. The bottom thickness is 1.6 but it's doing it in eight layers so maybe that's just that's just to, to f compensate for some speed let's c carry on down infills 10 percent the infill pattern is debatable if if uh gyroid is optimal or even concentric really i, I think uh i think really triangles is, is even fine for for most prints as long as you've got supports kind of going in all directions inside the part uh you should be okay down the print temps are identical, which is uh, which is good. All 200s and 60 on the build plate. Then we come to speed, and here is where things really have some significant difference. The Impox file, you can see the speeds are considerably lower, uh, with the exception of travel speed, which is uh, identical. But all, all the other speeds, overall print speed, infill, wall speed, uh, different layer speeds, brim all uh, significantly reduced and that is uh, certainly to create a reliable print to create a detailed print I think the the general accepted sentiment or standard practice is sort of slow will uh, kind of win the day for you uh, here these are these are reduced this I've printed plenty of things with this as a matter of fact I've printed everything for the last ever since my printer showed up <laughs> I was using this uh, until I pushed my luck and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, in a minute and 
uh, to tell you what I was trying to print when I started smashing the nozzle into the part and causing layer shifts all over the place. And then this brings me to my next significant difference between these two, which is in the travel. Uh, here, the retraction is minor, but the significant one is Z-hop height. Z-hop height here is, is 0 0.3. The default uh, any cubic file is 0 0.075. It's, it's a very short Z-hop height. And of course, you know, the more uh, the more you add retractions, bigger hops, you know, uh, um, create more movements, the the lower the print is going to go. But that, uh, uh, because of the problem I was having, I've had days of trying to print a particular set of parts, <laughs> and they've failed multiple times, and they've failed in some cases uh, 22 hours in on a 24-hour print. So... How much, how much time you're really saving if if the thing bombs out? So uh, this Z hop height though is great because it it lifts the nozzle as the part as the nozzle is moving over the part, not between parts. If you have multiple parts like streets uh, around buildings, uh, that's that's when the nozzles tend to, to move uh, in you know between the parts. But when it can't, when it has to move sort of over the parts or around a part that it's printing on to different areas of a model. Z-hop height will prevent the nozzle from smashing into your part if you crank it up. And uh, I, I was already playing with this value in this file when I was having this uh, layer shifting problem. Uh, and and I, I can see here that uh, this person significantly increased. That's a major contribution to the nozzle into the part. Uh, so I already had success printing with this once, uh, and I didn't have any layer shifting and things. I'm going to try a couple of more complex models. But one thing that I want to demonstrate, though, just taking these as they are in their unmodified form, I think it's worthwhile being a part of the part I was printing. I was trying to print six of these at once on the build plate some severe layer shifting this we want to demonstrate though that with the with the different settings how that affects time so we'll take them just as they are we'll hit slice we'll hit slice and let's see what the time differences are so an cubic default PLA profile with this piece which is you know not highly complex uh, telling us Two hours forty seven minutes. With well, this one, six hours twenty five minutes for the same part. I go almost like two and a half times uh the print time. So that's a that's a factor of a few things like we talked about. This layer height is a contributing factor and, and certainly speed is a contributing factor. If you start lowering the speed, lowering the layer height, um you know, that just increases the time by a significant amount between the two profiles. However, it should print just fine as a single piece by itself with this profile. Uh, I have printed it before in 2 millimeters. I actually printed it at 100% infill. That's helpful information to everybody and, and gives you some ideas of, of when to use which. So, what, where do you go from here? You could start with this one and sort of tweak it for your needs. You could start with this one and tweak it for your needs depending on 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 which direction you're trying to go. I've been having some success with this until I started loading up the build plate with a bunch of parts. Uh, and it wasn't just it wasn't just multiple parts on one build plate, but I've had multiple different pieces, sizes, shapes, what have you. Uh, and Sometimes you don't always have room here to print them all individually, and when this thing is trying to have all its movement around the build plate, uh, you can get that nozzle pushing into stuff. So after that started happening, uh, I ran around, I tightened all my screws and everything, made sure my belt tension was good, made sure nothing was cracked or broken, um, nothing was dirty, sticking, anything like that, all the usual things that, that you start troubleshooting when you're having shifting like that and then I started looking at 
once I thought the machine was physically fine, and I was in a, it wasn't a severe physical problem with the printer. So then I started looking at my uh, my profile here, and I was I started uh, I started increasing the Z hop height, and it was helping my print. Uh, but then um, saw that this file was sort of well regarded and, and recommended, and I wanted to uh, download it, give it a try, but but also wanted to compare it to the standard uh, or or default, I guess, PLA profile. Anyway, I hope that walkthrough was helpful. Uh, thank you to this Mpox person for doing all this experimenting. I'm sure it wasn't easy to uh, arrive at, at all of this. Uh, it takes a certain degree of experience and experimenting, so I appreciate that. Uh, and this video was, was helpful at explaining some of these settings when when you can and should tweak them. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm at some point going to get brave enough to try a build plate full of of these again and see what happens. So thanks.